This is Mac Nelson, a Kansas City man who says he suffered excessive force at the hands of the Kansas City Police Department. In fact, he and his attorney told me they recently settled with KCPD for $500,000. It's a settlement they say wouldn't have been possible without a police accountability group and a video captured on a cell phone. It's the same video that's now being reviewed along with the incident itself by the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office. A quick warning, some of the images and video you're about to see could be considered disturbing to some. It's been almost a year since the pavement outside this Kansas City gas station was marred by bloodstains from two separate incidents that happened just hours apart. Two things they share in common, both involved Kansas City police officers and both were caught on camera. First, on August 8, 2022, a man was shot and killed by KCPD, a shooting that was ruled justified after surveillance video showed him nearly hitting an officer with his vehicle. Then, hours later, police said a witness to that fatal shooting fell to the ground as he was resisting arrest. But his attorney and witnesses argue this cell phone video tells a much different story. As you watch, pay attention to the right side of the screen, almost off camera. It happened so fast, we're slowing the video down to give you a better look as Mac Nelson's body hits the ground. Steve Young was the man who happened to be recording at that very moment. A founding member of Casey Leap, the Law Enforcement Accountability Project, Young and his team of volunteers make it their mission to respond to police-involved shootings also they can monitor the investigations that ensue. We will actually document the whole scene. We'll stay until the scene is clear. We'll actually question any witnesses, any people around in the area. We do our own canvassing. Uh, because we just don't believe what the police, you know, what the police say. As soon as he heard the news about that officer-involved shooting, he rushed to the scene and hit record. Meanwhile, according to the police report, Nelson was filming the crime scene of the police-involved shooting on his Facebook Live. He was allegedly asked to move behind the crime scene tape, but refused to comply. The report states he was notified he was under arrest, and as an officer referred to as P.O. Frazier began to handcuff him, Nelson resisted by jerking his arms away and attempting to twist his body, resulting in him falling to the ground. But Young says that's not what he saw when the male officer approached Nelson from behind. He placed himself behind Mac's back as if he was going to put handcuffs on him. And so from the time he got over there and he got behind his back, he picked him up and just body slammed him. It was like there was no conversation or anything. He wasn't doing to you. He wasn't doing nothing to them. I know, I know. He probably slammed his head on the ground. Nelson was eventually taken to a local hospital by ambulance. According to his attorney, John Paserno, he suffered multiple injuries, leading to PTSD that lingers to this day. He sustained numerous cuts, bruises, lacerations to his head, to the top of his shoulder, to his arm, and his face uh, was split open pretty well. Blood was gushing out. He uh, had to get, I believe, 11 stitches, uh, some on the exterior of his face and then some on the inside uh, to close up the wounds. Paserno filed a lawsuit on Nelson's behalf, alleging excessive force and claiming officers lied on the police report. He says rather than take the case to trial, both sides reached a settlement of $500,000. But it's not a matter of case closed for Nelson just yet. That's because he was charged with three misdemeanors in connection with what happened that night, disorderly conduct, resisting arrest and trespassing, charges that landed him in jail till he entered a guilty plea. So when he pled guilty, uh, he had been in custody. And as too often happens in America, people plead guilty just to get out of jail, whether or not they're guilty. So for the last 30 years, I cannot tell you the dozens of times that clients either over at the jail or sitting in my office have told me this happened. This officer assaulted me. This officer lied to me or lied in the police report. Paserno says his client didn't know the video existed when he pleaded guilty. That discovery didn't come till much later, but he said it made all the difference in this case. Do you think you would have been successful with this settlement if you hadn't had access to that video from Leap? Absolutely not. No, there's no case without the video. So tomorrow, Attorney John Paserno will be back in court trying to get the convictions against Mac Nelson reversed. KCPD conducted its own internal investigation into what happened, and that investigation has been turned over to the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office, where it is still under review. Now, because of that ongoing investigation, KPD told me they were unable to comment on the story. But what about the officer involved in the altercation, P.O. Frazier? 
Uh, well, that they actually were able to confirm for us. They said both that officer and the officer who wrote that police report are both still on active duty. They're both still on patrol. Obviously, if anything changes in terms of any charges or if those convictions are reversed, we'll certainly update our viewers accordingly. All right, just learned Casey Leap's been around for just two mm -hmm. years now. Yeah, since 2021, they said they're made up of all volunteers and they get called all hours of the day and the night. They respond to these scenes and they try to document everything. All right, Kayla, thanks for this important story. Appreciate mm -hmm. it.